Hey. Let's go ahead and return to the Beckett Cook Show. Now, the last time we covered him, we covered the first half of his episode where he tried to say that there was a connection between people being gay and the spiritual realm, which I kind of just felt like he was saying that uh, people should have gay superpowers. I don't know. But let's go ahead and continue the rest of his episode and see if we ever actually get to a point or if it ends up still being more meandering nonsense. But before we get to that... We have the fan art section. So we have a pixel version of the Slime Surus model. This might be one of the reasons why we have Slime Surus on screen right now. Done by Quethum. 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 I've never had a problem pronouncing your name until right now, and I don't know why. Anyways, as always, thank you all for the fan art submission. If you want your fan art to be shown on a later episode, the best way to do so is drop it into the fan art section in the Discord. With that said, AriXD, thank you very much for redeeming your points for an... Ada, ada. Fucking monster. And with that, come on, Beckett. And it sounds so Let's kind of bizarre and, and sounds... Too supernatural, uh, even though the Bible is, is is a book about, you know, there's a lot of supernatural events in the Bible, including yeah. a donkey speaking, including the serpent speaking in the garden, including the resurrection, the virgin birth, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so it's not surprising that there's supernatural things happening and there's there's this unseen realm as as the book is called. And, and so God pronounces judgment. He says, my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh. His yeah. day shall be 120 years. Now somebody okay, so this is the, so this is the point where he said that he thinks that that means that in 120 years God was going to kill the world instead of people would live to 120 years old. Is that terror yelling in the background? Yep, yep, that is terror yelling in the background. Bible scholars think that that's God putting a, a limit on humans' lifespan. I don't think that's the case. I think that the 120 years is the time bet between this event and Noah. In the flood basically so it's, it's 120 years between the nephilim and noah the flood and so yeah and so he says that the the nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward which is interesting so were they still around after the flood that's and and i think michael heiser i think he says that they they were still around after the flood i mean look at if you remember the in um is it exodus or numbers when they the spies go into the land and they see the giants I can't okay. remember which book it is, or it could be Deuteronomy. Anyway, in one of those books, they, they do it twice. Spice. So it's in numbers. He at least tells us in post. Let's go into Canaan, and they see these giants. Um, anyway. Oh, yeah, captions. We forgot to put captions on. Sorry. Sorry, let's take a look here. Um, okay, so not much content content has happened yet. We're just kind of going over when the Nephilim happened. For those who don't remember, apparently in ye olden days, uh, for those who didn't see part one, uh, angels came down and came into women, and after cream pieing the Earth's women, we got the Nephilim. That That's the story we're going with. And that made Diablo 3 a real awkward playthrough. So so that's the second rebellion, Genesis 6. And it it just increases the, the corruption of, of humans. It increases the depravity of man. So it's not just the fall. So it's the fall, Genesis 6, and then we go to Genesis 11, which is the Tower of Babel story, or Babel, however you want to pronounce it. I think the Hebrew is Babel. So in the Tower of Babel story, remember that the whole, it says the, now the whole earth had one language and the same words. So everyone spoke the same language. And, and as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. This is in Babylon. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks. So they basically, they basically kind of invented bricks. And once they realized they could make bricks, they started to have this desire to build this kind of uh, sort of temple mount or this ziggurat, what is what it's called, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of place where they could meet with the gods. Because they thought that, you know, if the gods were in the air and the higher they built this ziggurat or this kind of sort of pyramid sort of like structure, the higher they built it, they, you know, the closer to the gods they could get and they could uh, bring, even bring the gods down to them. And so, um, so they say, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. So again, they're wanting to make a name for themselves instead of, instead of honoring the name of God, a Yahweh. Uh, I don't think that's really what's happening there. Wasn't it that like they wanted to make the, t they wanted to make the tower specifically because in making the tower, they could prove that they could do anything and they could do anything while working together. And that was the thing that God got really mad about. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, 
this feels like not the way that that story normally uh, normally goes. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so again, this is like uh, ratcheting up more and more rebellion, more and more destruction. And so it says in verse five, and the Lord came wait, down to see the city and the wait, tower. Wait, more and more rebellion, more and more destruction. They're literally just building a building at this point, dude. There's nothing destructive about building a building. It literally, definitionally, is the opposite of destructive. And the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only only the beginning of what they will do. <laughs> so God's like, let's let's cut this off let's, at the knees. Let's stop this. Cause why should we stop this? Now, now, a couple things here, a couple things here. First of all, why should we stop this? Secondly, why hasn't God stopped us from doing literally anything afterwards? Like, think about, think about it, think about it. From the perspective, like, let's pretend the Tower of Babel actually happened. Okay? If this is what actually happened, then God said at one point, Hey, people are getting a little out of hand. Gotta cut that off at the knees. They're building shit with bricks, and that's no good. And then we discovered steel. And then we just started building buildings with steel. Way taller than brick buildings. And at that point, God was like, yeah, that's fine. Like, seriously, several thousand story high uh, tower? God, I sleep. Couple story high ziggurat built with mud bricks? Real shit? That's God. That's God right now. He's just so upset. Is it is it just because it was made with bricks? Is that the thing? Like if we use, oh, I know what it is. It's because it's because we started using iron in things, and God's allergic to iron. That's it. This is only the beginning of what they're gonna do. These rebellious people that I created, these humans that I created to be in a relationship with, and they're just going they're going crazy. So let's stop this. And God says, "Come." How much of a controlling dad does that sound like to you? I made you so that I could have a relationship with you. And now you go off to play video games with your friends? How dare! I'm going to have to beat you. Jesus. Let us confuse. And when he says let us, what he's he's not talking about the Trinity here. He's the, the reason he uses the plural, let us, is he's talking about the divine council. The all the the, the heavenly realm. Yeah, the, the, heavenly the Elohim. Council, uh the, the basically the angels, the heavenly host. Um, basically God's entourage in, in the heavens. And so he says, come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth and etc. And be because, and it's called Babel because the Lord confused the language of all the earth and the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So this is kind of the beginning of, if you want to talk about like critical race theory or kind of racial division. What? This is kind of where what? it starts. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. What? How did we How did we get here? How did we get to critical race theory? What? What? That felt like it was out of left field. Why are we at CRT? What? I'm confused. I feel like we jumped a shark at some point. I think we've nuked the fridge at some point here. What, 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 what the fuck does CRT have to do with people speaking different languages? No, that is not... You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about! God did not randomly change people's skins or just give them prejudice at this point. It's just language. <laughs> oh my fuck. It's like God scatters people and divides people and uh, confuses their languages. And so... Congratulations, God is responsible for racism. Cancel God on Twitter.com. This is kind of where that, in my opinion, this is where, I don't even know if Dr. Heiser talks about this, but I, I think this is where this all begins. Uh, this kind of tension between nations, between races, between uh, people, people groups. So so those are the three judgments. You know, God, it's it's uh, Genesis 3 with the fall. It's, it's the tower, it's uh, Genesis 6. And it is Genesis 11 with the Tower of Babel. And so it really, these, these kind of spiritual beings ratchet up, as I said, they ratchet up the depravity of man on earth. And then of course God calls out, well, then there's the flood and, and God saves Noah and his family. 
Um, but then there's more rebellion after that. And then finally God calls Abraham out of Abram out of Ur, and then he's called Abraham after that. But he calls him out. So so just imagine for a second you're God. You have unlimited cosmic power, okay? And as God, you have the ability to see into the future because you are all knowing. And as an all knowing deity, you know the end result of all actions, right? Logically. So what that tells me is that God is not very creative. God literally went, you know what? I can see into the future. I know what's going to happen when I do this. I'm still going to do it wrong. I'm going to scatter them at the Tower of Babel. Oh, no, they're still depraved and fucking angels. <sighs> Fine, I'll kill everybody on Earth. God damn it. They're still depraved and still fucking angels. How many times do I have to teach the, these you guys this lesson? Little did we know it was actually God. It was actually God who needed to learn the lesson. Because, again, in his lack of creativity, he could not conceive of a way to get people to stop being depraved. Apparently. With infinite knowledge, he could not conceive of a way for us to stop fucking shit up. And I think this explains the Sonic the Hedgehog fandom. Even God himself was unable to stop our depravity. And now, everything in the Sonic fandom makes sense. Every bit. Every single bit. If even a deity cannot stop us from grabbing random ass divine beings and trying to have them splurge into us, I I really can't see if he has any power over fucking Sonic. I don't. Out of Ur into Canaan, and God says to Abraham, as you know, he makes a covenant and he says, you know, the nations will be blessed uh, by your seed. So, uh, which is which is amazing that God even d designed that plan. So God. The, na the, the nations will be blessed by your seed. Abraham, we need you to fuck. We don't need you to just have sex. We need you to fuck. And then your seed will bless millions of nations. Abandons the nations until uh, he starts, he brings Abram out of Ur and starts that whole process. So by the way, Elohim, so that, that term sons of gods that I, I've read, it's the term is Elohim. And we, we of course associate the word Elohim with God, with Yahweh. Yep. But Elohim is not not a title it's a set of attributes so yes god is elohim but there are also other elohim in the spiritual realm other kind of uh different ranks of angels and Never and so an elohim is basically a disembodied member of the spiritual world and there's as i said there's different ranks and hierarchies of elohim and yahweh is in this yahweh's in the spiritual realm but so are others so we have to remember that we have to remember that there's a whole spiritual realm going on there's a battle between God and his and his heavenly host and Satan and his demonic his demonic host. Our imaginary friends and imaginary enemies are constantly fighting each other for dominance. Okay. Uh, also, Zio Dunn, thank you very much for the follow. Greatly appreciated. But okay, let's let's take a minute to think about this. So, I want to ask you what the functional distinction is between an angel and a god. Think of what you conceive of as a deity. Must that deity contain the tri-omni traits? Yeah, holy shit, what kind of a lore dive are we doing this anime? Sounds fucking amazing. I know, right? But, like, really, not, not just god, but, like, a god. What is the logical distinction between an angel and a god? If your definition of God does not need to have the Omni traits and merely requires deification, which would fit a polytheistic model, I would argue that those aren't angels. They're just gods. And your gods, again, the most specialist snowflake in having to call himself the only god. So, and the question is, an interesting question Michael Heiser brings up is why, if Satan knows what his fate is if he knows that he's going to be destroyed and these demons know they're going they, they're not stupid they know what's going to happen they know uh the end of the story that jesus is going to crush them this then this would be a logical inconsistency this would be a logical inconsistency in the writing of the bible so why are they why are they trying so desperately to 
attack Christians or keep non-believers from from entering the kingdom of God. Bad Why writing. So desperate to hang on, and it's because it goes back of bad writing. Back to Romans 11, and it goes back to the full this this biblical concept of the fullness of the Gentiles. So Christ is returning when the fullness of the gen Gentiles is is complete, and so. And that's when the nations will be reclaimed through the gospel. That's when the, there will be the fullness of the gospel and all of the nations will be reclaimed. And so they, they're aware of that. These demonic beings these, in the demonic realm, they are aware of this, but they are trying to basically just delay. They're delaying their judgment because that's why they're so desperately attacking Christians and non-believers and um, trying to prevent, trying to slow down basically the, their judgment and what's going to happen. But, but hold on, that doesn't make any sense because... Isn't it also said in the Bible that nothing can change when the, the final days happen? Moreover, aren't there like several things like the, 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 the coming of the Antichrist and shit like that that are prophesized? If if you were an angel, if you were a demon, right? Okay, let, let's pretend you're a demon who actually read the book because you have a little bit of self-awareness. We're going to treat this like an actual anime or some shit that was written by somebody with a measure of competence, Okay. You're a demon, you've read the Bible, you know what happens. Every single time that a potential Antichrist gets born, you zero in on where they are and you just, bam, abort that baby. And then you end up being the world's number one abortion advocate because you might ac accidentally find yourself in a fucking universe, or not a universe, but in, in a country where the Antichrist is going to be born, but you can't abort the baby because of the laws. So you have to go there and you inevitably end up enacting the most progressive principles in the entire world, liberating women's rights everywhere, just so you can constantly cuck the Antichrist so that you don't get an eternity in hell. Because as long as the Antichrist is successfully cucked, you don't have to worry about the prophecy coming true. Would the fetus of the Antichrist still go to heaven? Oh, that'd be fucking funny. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Imagine God's just got, like, this line of potential Antichrist just in a cell. And he's just sitting there pacing and looking at them with his apparently disembodied self. And just going... 300 of you. 300 of you were meant to begin the apocalypse. 300. How did I birth 300 failures? And then one of the Antichrist children raises their hand and goes, Question. Would we be in hell if we succeeded? God just goes, Yes, you would have burned forever in eternal torment. Isn't it better then that we... We're up here with you forever? No! <laughs> No, it's not better that you're up here with me. I don't want you up here with me. And now we understand that God really is the abusive father in the relationship. He'd rather have his comfy apocalypse and send one of his sons to hell. This needs to be an anime. This needs to be an anime right now. Happened to them, so that's the reason... And it seems like now in our world, you know, does it, does it not seem, I mean, it's been going on for, for centuries and centuries and millennia, but, but it seems now that things are really getting, as I keep saying, ratcheted up and the demonic is really kind of, and this is why. Demonic is not a measurement tool. You cannot take a, a freaking ruler and put it up to something and just go, yep, this is 83.666% demonic. You know, there's drag queen story hour, and this is why Nickelodeon I just, you know, read that article about Nickelodeon, or I saw the video where they have a drag queen um, teaching kids in some show. I don't know what show it is, but it sounds pretty... Blue's Clues. Crazy. And... It's not crazy. You're just really sensitive. And by the way, that when when drag queens... I hate that term is funny, but when drag queens do that kind of stuff... It, because I remember when I was, I think I was 15 or maybe even 14, I went to my first drag show in Dallas okay. at a gay bar. And it was, I just was so shocked. I was blown away by it. I was like, whoa. It just was so stunning to me. And I, in, almost in a good way, but also in a scary, I was kind of scared. <laughs> but what's weird about the drag queen thing is it's, it sexualizes. It's very sexual.
Everybody, raise your hand if you've seen drag queens that are not sexual. Because remember, there's a difference between a drag queen and a drag show. There's a difference between the two. A drag show definitely has sexual energy. In many cases. But drag queens are not inherently sexual. There's nothing sexual about putting on a wig and putting on a dress and putting on makeup. That is not sexual, my dude. Come on. Um, it sexualizes the, the children who are seeing this. What? 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 <laughs> what? How are the children sexualized watching a person in a dress? How? How does that sexualize children? How? You don't know what words mean. It, because they're seeing this bizarre image of sexuality. So it, it sexualizes them at a very young age, which is crazy. And I, it, so... Only crazy if you're stupid enough to agree with what you just said. So we obviously we're living in this time now where it feels like an upside down world and it feels like the end is nigh. Okay, no, it's not that the world feels like an upside down world. Do you, can, can I explain something to you? Every generation feels like the world that they are in after the age of 30 is upside down. Every fucking one. Because new people are born into the world with different ideas about how the world should work, and then the world seems all topsy-turvy to you. But that's not what's happening. It's just different. And that difference is what scares you. It's outside of your norm, so it's terrifying. And it's always been that way. For every person who's ever grown up ever, there comes a point where the world does not feel like it's for them anymore. Because the way the world worked when they were born into it and when they grew up is very different than the way the world works 30 years later. This is not called Satan is coming to coom on the planet. This is called you're getting older and feeling disenfranchised. It's normal. You don't have to turn to religion to explain away the fact that you are more and more uncomfortable with the way the world is functioning because of shifting generational zeitgeist. The end is close, but, uh, and the end has been close for 2000 years. God is literally the king of edging. His second coming is going to be the biggest blue balled load ever in the history of always. And I just want to just remind us that, and Dr. Heiser is just amazing at doing this in his book, that, yeah, there are some major spiritual forces at work, major demonic forces. And so it's almost like it's funny because when I, as I'm reading his book, it's, I am now less sort of perturbed is, I don't know if that's the right word really, but um, perturbed at, at people in politics or people in, in, um, in media or, or celebrities who are promoting all of this stuff, who are promoting ba basically wickedness. I'm less perturbed by, by them specifically because I now understand that there is demonic activity and demo a whole unseen realm behind them that they're, they, they're not even aware of it. And Oh my God. The world bothers me less because there are ghosts telling people what to do. That's what you just said. That is what you just said. I am less upset by people doing evil things in the world because now I know ghosts done it. You're an adult. You're an adult. Why the fuck are you literally going, my imaginary enemies have told people that they should be wicked and therefore it's more okay. If anything, ghosts controlling people is more alarming. This demonic realm is in a way you kind of using them as puppets for their, for their purposes. And they're not even aware of that. So, so now when I pray, I pray more against the demonic realm uh, more so than, you know, for these specific people in, in, in positions of power and influence. And so I pray more for something that literally affects nothing in reality than actual things that affect real people in reality. Way to make your prayers infinitely less useful than they already weren't. I, I've really kind of shifted my prayer life into 
seeing so i have more i have way more sympathy now for you know certain wicked so-called you know certain seemingly very wicked people in the world i have more sympathy for them because of because of this book that i'm reading and because there is such a, a demonic realm that is pulling a lot of the strings because remember in genesis 6 it's like these sons of god these these principalities and powers of, of the air saw the daughters of man and saw that they were attractive and they went they took them as wives and went into them so these women really had no choice in the matter they were they were uh, basically raped <laughs> they were they were raped by the super these supernatural beings and so um so now i have a different fear not mortal we're here to coom so imagine your worldview is so shaky that you have to have imaginary enemies explaining away why people act the way they do. And you have to have this entire lore of angels coming down and raping women to justify God genociding the world. Just, just think about this. I understand that from a Christian perspective, this may seem less silly. And when I was a Christian, this seemed less silly. But from the outside now, this literally just seemed seems like somebody who read a fantasy novel and they're trying desperately to juxtapose real world with their fantasy and going, well, that one doesn't make any sense. And because I can't find a logical explanation for it, I guess I'll go ahead and rip this random explanation from my fantasy book and I'll put it in there. Like, imagine... If we did this with another fantasy, if I explained away somebody's behavior by appealing to Pokemon, ah, man, you know, this person's acting like a real dick. I think they have Darkrai infesting their nightmares, and now they're being kind of an ass shit. Or, you know, I understand that this person is, like, being real mean to me. I think it's, I think they're possessed by a Gengar right now. Or their dreams are being eaten by a Hypno, and now they're real upset. Like, just... Imagine if that's what we did, and we just explained everything away with Arceus. Or Arceus. Can I? God, I'm really bad at pronouncing things today. <laughs> uh, continue. Different kind of understanding of... Well, not a different, but I have a more enhanced understanding of the supernatural and of the, the prince of the power of the air, as Paul talks about, and the, 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 the principalities and, and all, whatever I read in Ephesians 6, the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness, the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So I have a better understanding of that now. And, I'm, and I hope this helps you kind of see all that's going around us, that's happening around us with, you know, the with gay pride, with the LGBTQ movement, with the trans movement, with um, all kinds of things that are happening, Marxism and um, CRT, like all this stuff is being fueled. <laughs> Marxism, demons, CRT, demons, gay sex, demons. It's all demons. It's all demons. It's demon cum. By the demonic realm. If not even, um, I mean, humans, we have free will, but it's also, it's, it's not only fueled, but it, in some cases it's directly being controlled by the demonic realm. Then we don't have free will. If there is something outside of us that is controlling us, then we do not have free will. Outside of the fact that if your God has perfect knowledge, we don't have free will either. But, you know, neither of those things. Neither of those things matter. Which is scary. <laughs> but praise God, as believers, um, Satan has no authority over us. Yep, yep, totally, totally. Demons are infecting everything around me, but I, I am unaffected. God, this is like that, Simpson, uh, that Simpsons meme. Fucking, maybe I'm out of touch with the world. No, it's the world that's out of touch. That's you, right now, except with Demon Coom. Because we are we are no longer slaves to Satan, but we are bond servants to Christ. We're no longer slaves to darkness, but we are in the light, which is, praise God for that. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine still being in the dark. Um, oh my God. <laughs> I can't imagine. St you didn't even know you were in the dark then either. Jesus Christ, this is... This is hurting. This is hurting. Because the thing is, is that you legitimately believe this. You legitimately believe that there are people controlled by demons, and you legitimately believe that you were under demonic influence at one point. Which is almost a way of not taking responsibility for your actions as well. Yeah, this guy is, this guy is an ex-gay, apparently. And so, and by the way, if there's anyone watching who's not in the light, who doesn't, hasn't put his or her faith in Christ, I nope. beg you to do so. Nope. Sorry. I do not put my faith in genocidal maniacs. 
outside of the fact that I don't believe your god exists. Even if I did, your god literally has a higher body count than any being in the entire world. And if I won't put my faith in people with fewer body counts than your god, then why should I put my faith in your deity? Because you're, you're not aware of that you are serving Satan right now, that you are serving, that you're in the kingdom of darkness right now. And and I beg you to uh, just just beg God to have mercy on you and to, to bring you into his marvelous light. Because if it's God's influence that will make it happen, then it's also God's choice for it not to happen, which means if I go to hell, it's God's fault, not mine. It, funny how that works. Also, your prayer would have no influence on that either. There's nothing like it. It is so amazing and supernatural and um oh my god and of course no, it's you, not <laughs> you get eternal life when you do that when you put your trust in christ can you show me evidence of this eternal life please can you show me one christian who's lived forever can you show me evidence of the supernatural realm where you're supposed to live forever could you could you do any of that please literally i would i would love if there was an example of this that happened but here's the thing so I know there are Christians in my audience, and I'm not trying to disparage you when I say this, but I'm sorry, I'm just not going to buy in anymore to an ideology that tells me that I'll receive my best reward after I die. So it's it's like a bad insurance policy. I never get to see it materialize. I, there's never a point in time where I get to see it, nor does it ever benefit me in the here and now. Like, you can say that you aren't affected by demons because you're a Christian, but there's nothing in the Bible that says that Christians are not affected by demons, as far as I know. So if I'm in the kingdom of darkness, does that mean I'm meant to be here? Yep. And we actually do have a predeterministic universe via the biblical perspective, because if God is an omniscient being, then we only have a predetermined universe. We only have... We only have fatalism at that point. Not only does he forgive all of your sins, but he imputes his righteousness to you. And so you're covered in perfect righteousness and you have eternal life. And because you're imputed with his righteous, with Christ's righteousness, because of the sacrifice he did on the cross, um, you can stand in the day of judgment. You Doesn't that give you kind of a superiority complex, though? Just saying. You are declared innocent and you can stand in the presence of the holiness of God and be innocent and blameless because of what Christ did. So, because when you get, when, when that moment happens, when you put your trust in Christ and believe in him as your Lord and Savior, you're united to Christ. Christ is in you and you're in Christ. So there's this union that, that's gets, by the way, that rarely gets talked about too, that we're united to Christ and we're co-heirs with Christ. We're heirs to God and co-heirs with Christ, which is amazing. So I urge you, if you're not a believer. It's so amazing, but you can't even explain what that means. Not in a way that can be tangibly actually looked at. Like, co-heirs to Christ, what what does that mean? You're an heir to the kingdom of heaven? Okay, cool, but what is that? Why should I care? Like, okay, again, you can use all the explanations from the Bible that you want, but at the end of the day, you are handing me a book, and you're telling me that in this book, it tells me that I will receive this lovely timeshare up in heaven when I die, but I never get to see it, I, I never get to know it, and then you say, well, that's the thing, it's, it's on faith. Yeah, but every single time that you're sold snake oil, it's on faith. Every single time. <sighs> Continue. Put your trust in Christ. Read the Gospels. Go to a, a gospel church, a gospel center church, and hear the preaching of the word. Put your trust in Christ. And I hope this helped you. And um, I will see you next week on the Becca Cook Show. God bless you guys, and I'll talk to you then. Nope. We might cover you again, but we will not speak. Much like with Little Light Studios, I have no I have no intention of speaking with you. Oh boy. So what do we get here? We have a guy who is basically an ex-gay trying to explain to us that uh, there is supernatural demonic influence in why people are gay, and therefore he can't get mad at people who are gay uh, because it is demons who are causing it, which feels like the and then he tries to connect it all to Marxism and CRT in like a really offhand comment. Yeah, no, I no. I'm sorry. There was there was not much of worth that could actually be gleamed out of this. 
But that was our first experience with the Beckett Cook Show. And yeah, I know there's a lot of people in the in the chat who said their gaydars are going off. Oy, oy, oy. Well, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. That would be that would be helpful, I imagine. With that said, though, with uh, do you know how far he is down the uh, thing of extremism? No, I don't think that he's actually an extremist. What he is is somebody who's like disconnected from reality. And this is coming from a cartoon slime in the middle of Mad Monster Mansion from Banjo Kazooie with a Final Fantasy text box near me. With a Friday Night Funkin' Cirrus dancing around over there as well. And yet I would argue that I am more in line with reality here than he is. And that's kind of my problem. Because it's not harmful in the way that the NIFB is harmful, where they tell you that, oh, you need to kill the gays, they're bad. This is a different kind of harm for where it, ma where it makes you step away from reality. It makes you disconnect from things that are actually real. And that's kind of insidious to me. Because if you can separate yourself from reality in such a way, you really stop caring about people in the same way unless you can bring them into the same mindset and, and mentality. Uh, but with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this content, hit the like button over on YouTube. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow on Twitch if you haven't already. And with all that said, guys... Fairy Queen, Kiri, thank you very much for giving me your points, friend. Arara. Right at the end. Insert in a video tagline here, you monster. <laughs>